What is it like to have schizophrenia? Well, I was diagnosed with schizophrenia in 2005. I studied in a reputed school and I was bullied heavily, my parents neglected me, my teachers ignored me. During the examinations, one night I opened the locks of my door and I ran away from my house, barefoot, for around 70 hours. I was loitering in the streets with no food, water, money, shoes, or even clothes. I slept on the streets and sometimes the weather was fierce like heavy rainfall etc. Goons tried to kill me, some had even beaten me. I came in front of a fast-moving car, but miraculously survived. After three days, I found someone who gave me clothes and then he brought me home. After reaching my house, I was rushed to a hospital, there my hands and feet were all tied up and I was given multiple shots of injection, I could barely walk, talk or eat with my hands then. After around two weeks I was taken back to my house. I continued my medication but after a few months my medications were stopped as my parents thought that I had recovered. In July 2006, I was rushed to a neuropsychologist because I was talking nonsense and behaving weirdly. I was told in my report that besides schizophrenia I had developed tardive dyskinesia, a neurological disorder, due to the side effects of medications. I again had to be given medications. Some of my weird experiences during those time were. I thought I was Lord Krishna and that people respect, worship me. I sometimes even made poses like him, in public places, as if he was standing in a dancing pose holding the flute. I also believed that I was Lord Buddha who has attained Nirvana. I thought that Hilary Duff was my soulmate and that she would marry me. I thought she was sending me special messages via the TV. I thought that I was responsible for the deaths of people who have died in plane crash and in September 11th, I even cried a lot for feeling guilty in public. I thought the TV news anchors were speaking about me. I felt beautiful smell of roses were coming out of HBO TV channel and that the smell color was green. I felt I could control the movement of the sun or I could control the weather. I felt I could move ceiling fan with the help of my mind only. I thought people were inserting their fists in my anus and taking away my knowledge, intelligence. This thought was intense and scared me a lot. I often went out of my house with shirts buttoned in wrong places and with only one shoe in my feet. I heard airplanes flying every day at some specific times. I thought I had cancer, malaria, AIDS etc. and that Bill Gates was looking to cure my illnesses. I even thought that he would fly a special plane directly to my house and take me to US. I thought President Bush was trying to recruit me in the Secret Service because I thought that I was psychic. I felt people could read my thoughts and insert their thoughts in my head. Once a car driver was trash talking to another driver in filthy language. I thought they were talking about me, which was of course not true. Once I had to visit my doctor. Now the doctor's clinic was just beside a school for the blind. My mother was on the phone talking to my father who was giving her directions of the doc's clinic and referred to the blind school. I screamed loudly to mom saying, please don't take me to the blind school as I was not blind. I thought I was special. One day a teacher entered the classroom. Obviously, the teacher was standing on entering the classroom. On seeing the teacher other students also stood up and said good morning. I remained seated because I thought that I had special psychic powers and that I was their boss so they were all standing and I could sit. I was once going to my doctor in a rented car. My father was sitting beside me in the back seat. There were two people in the front. After some time, in the middle of the journey, I raised both my arms thinking that I was God and I started saying something loudly. I thought I was God and that I had special powers. That was very embarrassing as not only the strangers in the front but also the general crowd, in traffic jams, could see the way I was behaving. I thought I could move objects with my mind, had seen ghosts, devil. I even thought that the word slash concept eternity was actually a living being and that he has been my friend millions of YRS ago and that now he was calling me. I did not care to take care of my hygiene. During that period I rarely brushed or had shower. 
I thought people in Africa were starving so I often refused to eat my food feeling guilty that while I was filling my stomach, they starved. I thought people were throwing stones slash bricks at my house at night because I felt that they knew I have caused all the problems in the world, which was of course false. Most of the above things happened in 2005 to 2006. Fast forward to 2016. In August 2016, my doctor stopped my medications. I no longer take them. I have a MBA marketing degree from a reputed college. I also started working in a bank from last week. I have a few close friends and I am in a relationship for over two years. I have experienced a lot in my life and I believe that there is a lot left to learn and experience. I believe schizophrenia can be a gift only if we are aware of this illness and accept the fact that something is not right with us. By doing so, we can reduce the effect of the illness to a great extent. Schizophrenia, this is a long-term condition that affects the way a person thinks. It is characterized by feelings of paranoia, hallucinations, and delusions, and significantly impacts a person's ability to function. The word schizophrenia comes from the Greek and literally means split mind, which has led to the myth that people with the condition have split personalities, but they do not. Instead, they suffer from delusions and hallucinations that they believe are real. There are different types of schizophrenia. The main ones are paranoid hallucinations and delusions, catatonic unusual movements, switching between being very active and being very still, and disorganized, which has aspects of both. Despite popular belief, individuals with schizophrenia are not always violent. They are, however, more likely to abuse alcohol and drugs, and it is these habits, combined with their condition, that can cause them to become aggressive. Schizophrenia appears to result from a combination of physical, genetic, psychological, and environmental factors. MRI scans have identified abnormal levels of neurotransmitters dopamine and serotonin and unusual brain structure, and there might be a correlation between the condition and pregnancy or birth complications. It is also thought that excessive cannabis use in young adulthood can be a trigger. Popular theories regarding the causes of schizophrenia in the second half of the 20th century included family dysfunction theories, such as the double bind when people are faced with contradictory, irreconcilable demands for courses of action, high levels of parent caregiver expressed emotion not tolerating those with the disorder, and learning the schizophrenic role through labeling. Since then, mental health specialists have observed that hearing voices or feeling paranoid are common reactions to trauma, abuse, or deprivation. Stress can trigger acute schizophrenic episodes, and learning to recognize their onset can help with management of the condition. Positive Symptoms Psychotic these symptoms are classed as positive because they are additions to a person's mental state and represent new ways of thinking and behaving that only develop with the condition. Hearing voices is common and can occur occasionally or all the time. The voices may be noisy or quiet, disturbing or negative, known or unknown, and male or female. Hallucinations involve seeing things that are not there but seem very real to the person and are often violent and very disturbing. Feeling sensations can cause a person to be convinced that they have unpleasant creatures such as ants crawling on or under their skin. Smelling and tasting things that cannot be identified can arise, and there may be difficulty discriminating between smells and tastes. Delusions fixed beliefs are held despite evidence to the contrary. The person may think they are famous and or being chased or plotted against. Feelings of being controlled by, for example, a religious or dictatorial delusionist, can overwhelm a person. The beliefs can make them act differently. Negative symptoms withdrawal, 
These symptoms are called negative because they represent a loss of certain functions, thoughts, or behaviors that a healthy person exhibits, but that are absent in those with schizophrenia. Difficulty communicating with others can result in changed body language, a lack of eye contact, and incoherence. Flattened emotions result in a significantly reduced range of response. The person will take no pleasure in activities. Tiredness may result in lethargy, change in sleep patterns, staying in bed, or sitting in the same place for long periods. Absence of willpower or motivation makes it difficult or even impossible for a person to engage in normal day-to-day -day activity. Poor memory and concentration means that the individual is unable to plan or set goals and has difficulty keeping track of thoughts and conversations. Inability to cope with everyday tasks results in disorganization. The individual How is it diagnosed? Schizophrenia is diagnosed through clinical interviews and specialist checklists during which the symptoms below are assessed. The earlier the condition is diagnosed and treatment begun, the better, so that there is less time for its extreme impact on personal, social, and work life to build up. While schizophrenia is not curable, people can overcome it enough to function day to day. A personalized treatment plan that caters to the specific needs of the individual with schizophrenia is required for people with such a complex mental health issue. Treatment Community mental health teams such as social workers, occupational therapists, pharmacists, psychologists, and psychiatrists work together to develop ways to help a person stay stable and progress. Medication in the form of antipsychotics is prescribed to reduce mostly positive symptoms, but it does not cure the condition. Psychiatric drug therapies act on neurotransmitters, such as dopamine and norepinephrine both associated with reward and pleasure, and serotonin which regulates mood and anxiety. They can be very effective in reducing symptoms but may have side effects, including drowsiness, nausea, or headaches. Treatments that physically disrupt or stimulate the brain's electrical signals are sometimes used when drug therapy has been ineffective. In ECT and TMS, low electrical currents are passed through the brain. Very occasionally, psychosurgery is used to alter brain functioning. This involves making small lesions in the brain to disrupt connections in the limbic system. Medications block or enhance the activity of different chemical neurotransmitters in the brain. They may increase the production of a particular neurotransmitter, interfere with how neurotransmitters are absorbed by receptors in the brain, or act directly on receptors. Cognitive behavioral therapy and the technique of reality testing can help with management of symptoms such as delusions. New developments use imagery to defuse stress that negative symptoms cause. CBV Cognitive Behavioral Therapy This therapy helps people to identify, understand, and correct the distorted thoughts that can have a negative effect on feelings and behavior. What is it? The aim is to change the negative thought and behavioral cycles that make the client unhappy. In order to understand the link between thoughts and behaviors, the therapist breaks problems down into separate parts analyzing the person's actions, thoughts, feelings, and physical sensations. The therapist can then understand how the client's internal dialogue, their automatic thoughts usually negative and unrealistic, affects their behavior. The therapist helps the client to recognize what experiences or situations trigger these unhelpful thoughts and gives them the skills to change their automatic reactions. Learning and practicing these skills is key to the effectiveness of the therapy. The therapist sets tasks for the individual to practice at home. By implementing new strategies repeatedly in their daily life, the client creates new patterns of positive behavior and realistic thinking and learns to apply them in the future. Negative thoughts create feelings. Phase 1. Get to know client. Build trust. Explain cycle. Thought. Feeling. Behavior cycle. Negative thoughts create feelings. Feelings create unwanted behavior. 
Behavior reinforces thoughts. Phase 2. Aim to break this cycle. Explore clients' problematic thoughts and behaviors. Analyze the effect these have on the client and on others. Together develop a plan to alter these thoughts and actions. Phase 3. Use a range of tools to break the cycle. Relaxation techniques. Problem solving with client. Exposure therapy. Monitor which activities help client. Phase 4. Encourage client to practice techniques after therapy. CBT. Suitable for those who link situations with fear and exaggerate thoughts. Helps clients stop their compulsions in the mind and in behavior. Client learns nothing bad happens if they stop performing compulsions. Their anxiety decreases and they break the thought cycle, so the behaviors can stop. Family therapy can improve relationships and coping skills within the family and educate anyone involved in a person's care. Family systems therapy. Relationships within the family unit are regarded as both the underlying cause of issues and the means by which they can be solved in this therapeutic approach that focuses on group dynamics. What is it? This therapy is based on the theories of psychiatrist Marie Bowen. Bowen used date interlocking concepts to find out how birth order, a person's role within the family, personality, and inherited traits all affect how individuals relate to each other in a family system. He defined the family by both the people within it and the way in which they interact. Viewing the family as an emotional unit in this way enables individuals to work together to solve problems these might be emotional issues affecting the whole family, such as death or divorce, or specific issues related to an individual member that have an impact on the rest of the unit. Therapists explore how family members see their roles and express them. This exploration allows each person to understand better how their actions affect other members of the group and how they are affected in turn. Understanding how external factors impact relationships within the family and how patterns can be repeated over generations is also key. For example, children with a poorly defined sense of their own individuality perhaps due to overbearing parents may seek out a partner with a similarly low level of differentiation. The two of them then pass on conflicts or problems associated with these traits to their own children. Improving communication, self-awareness, and empathy can help individuals to break these generational patterns and enable the family unit to build on its strengths and to use its interdependence to make positive changes. Bowen's Eight Interlocking Concepts Differentiation of Self How a person maintains their own sense of individuality while still functioning in the group. Emotional triangle, how the smallest network in a human relations system, in many cases formed by two parents and a child, operates. Family projection process, how parents' emotions, conflict, or difficulties are passed on to their children. Emotional cutoff, how individuals manage conflict within the family network by distancing themselves. Sibling position, how birth order influences the way children are treated, differences in expectation lead them to take on different roles, multi-generational transmission, how people seek partners with similar differentiation, so patterns repeat down the generations, societal emotional process, how family emotional systems go on to influence wider systems in society, like the workplace, nuclear family emotional process, how any tensions in the family affect the relationship patterns within the unit.